for him, this was amazing. So it turns out, he takes the guy's phone number, he returns the call, and he tells them, please, call so-and-so, he wants to donate a sukkah. He said you can go to a, book a-, to a bookstore, and you will be able to take from the bookstore schach and uh, one of these sukkahs that they're selling, and just give me the receipt, the bill, and I'll reimburse you, I'll pay for it. It turns out, the guy went, and he did that. The poor man went, went to the bookstore, told them, I'll get you the money. It turns out, he got a sukkah. And the sponsor went, and not only did he give a sukkah, he actually gave him $1,000 cash. He figured if they're so poor, they don't even have money to buy a sukkah, then probably they don't have money to buy a lulav or an esrig, or maybe a suit for yontif, or a hat, or maybe a dress, or maybe shoes, or maybe food. He was a nice man, and he donated very generously. So about three weeks after Sukkot, Rabbi Brule decided, as he went through the calendar, looking at all the different dates that people said they're going to drop off, something for the Gemach, which one drops off clothes, which one drops off tablecloths, all types of things come into the furniture Gemach. And he's looking through the names, and he says, you know what, I want to call this guy. I want to ask him, why in the world did he decide he has to donate a sukkah? I mean, there are a lot of things to donate. What possessed him that he said, I want to sponsor someone's sukkah? So he calls up the guy, and he says, Hi, Shalom Aleichem, Um, I'm Rabbi Brul, Yashikayach, for your sponsoring a sukkah for a poor family that was most thoughtful of you. Do you mind if I ask you, what made you think about donating a sukkah? Like, why did you feel like, that's what you wanted to do. So the guy says, I'll tell you the truth. I had a strange dream. In my dream, I saw that I was on top of a mountain. And it was a beautiful view. And I was enjoying looking around Hashem's magnificent world. But in my dream, I had a problem. How do I get down from this mountain? I guess getting up was easier than getting down. And he thought to himself, like, this is a very steep mountain. And as in my dream, I was wondering how, excuse me, I said one boy can go out at a time. But that's a rule. In other words, it's not to be broken. And it turns out, as a substitute, I like to keep track of which boys should get checks or X's for disturbing or for cooperating. And when the Rebbe comes back, he can see how the boys behave when he was absent. But listen what happened. So in my dream, I was wondering, how am I going to get down from the mountain? When suddenly, someone tells me, oh, you need help getting down? I'm like, please. Please. He says, okay, I'm going to help you down the mountain, but I want that you should donate a sukkah to a poor person who doesn't have a sukkah. So when I woke up, I didn't know what the meaning of the dream was, but hey, in my dream, I said I'll donate a sukkah, and that's why I called the gemach to donate a sukkah. And my bro said, that's fascinating, that Hashem got involved, Hashkacha brought this to help the poor guy who wanted so much to do the mitzvah of tzedakah, I mean of sukkah, that he went... When he had a guy dream that he has to donate it, and eventually was able to help the person. But that's what we say. Hashem has many ways to help people. And sometimes the many ways could be a person like a Baruch Brul, who's synonymous with Chesed. Recently, a shocking story happened in Eretz Yisrael. I heard the story from a, a younger man, named Soli Kohn. I don't know exactly all the details, but this is basically what happened. A very rich man went to visit Reb Aaron Leib Steinman in Eretz Yisrael, and being a manigadar, a gadoladar, a great Rosh Hashiva, this wealthy man wanted to impress the, the gadol. So he said, I would like to give a half a million dollars to any tzedaka that the Rav wants me to write the check to. And I just have one condition. 
I'll give the $500,000 if the Rav promises me that I will be able to sit next to the Rav in Olam Haba in Gan Eden. So it's a strange request. So Aaron Leib told him, let me see which yeshivas have chayvis, and maybe we'll, uh, we'll figure out an eitz for you. So he asked some of the balabatim there, some of the askanim, how much does this particular yeshiva owe? Yeshivas all too often owe lots of money to run an institution. Uh, it doesn't survive on just uh, meager tuition checks. And Rev. Aaron Leib Steinman asked uh, the askin. How much money does that yeshiva owe? And he said the yeshiva owes for six million dollars. So Rav Aaron Leib Steinman told him, if you are macabre on yourself to pay the entire deficit of the yeshiva, then I will promise you you'll be sitting together with me in Gan Eden. The Balabas got flustered, he got upset, he got angry. I only wanted to give a half a million dollars to Stucco. That's a lot of money, $500,000. Don't start twisting my arm that the only way I could get a chelik and Maba next to you is if I give $6 million. So he stormed out and he didn't give anything. So some of the chaver asked Ravon Leib, like, why did you have to chaper him that he should give much more? He offered five hundred. So he said, I'll tell you why. I worked very hard and I suffered a lot to get where I am. You can imagine that by becoming a Tama Chacham, a person has to be willing to suffer for it. It doesn't happen by sitting and relaxing on a couch. It's hard work, it's long nights, it's long days, it's concentration, it's uh, not running after the taivas of Olam Haza, the pleasures of this world, it's uh, not running after uh, eating and drinking and partying. And he said, I, I, I suffered a lot to get where I am. But him, he was willing to give a half a million dollars so easily. So I, 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 should he get a chelik and al for something that didn't seem so hard to him? He's a very rich man. Maybe for him half a million dollars is not so much. So I wanted to cause him to be in a situation that he's willing to suffer for it. Okay, if you're willing to suffer, you have to come up with so much money to help a yeshiva. It shouldn't chas uh, sink or close its doors. Then I'll be willing to give you a chelik and al next to me. And as a matter of fact, you'll deserve it. I'll be happy you should share with me, We both suffered for Yiddishkeit. But he didn't want to suffer, and that's why he lost out. But you see a big lesson from this story, that to get Olam Haba, there's a Gemara in Brachas, Tafhei Amid Aleph, it says, how do you get Olam Haba? It says, through Yisurin, through suffering. So a person thinks, I could do whatever I want in this world, and have a good time every day. I'm not sure if he's going to have Olam Haba. sure to <laughs> now, there is another story similar to this story about someone wanting to sit in Olam Haba next to Agadol, and I want to share that story with you. I got it from a sefer called Hasidic Tales. It's a very cute story. One year, in the city of Bardichev, everybody was going about getting ready for Yontif. You could hear the banging of the hammers, building up the sukkahs. You could hear the kids giggling as they're hanging up all their decorations. And you could smell the schach that was being dragged in the street by many children who were carrying branches from the trees to be able to adorn the crown of their sukkah. You could smell the meats, the fish, everything that was being cooked and baked Lakavid Simchas Yantif. It turns out, as Yantif was getting closer, and everyone was anticipating the great Yantif of Sukkis, Zman Simchasenu, everyone looking forward to the Einig Yantif. Please don't make noise with the chair because we are recording. So that noise actually will be heard by perhaps hundreds and thousands of people. Okay? Try to come on time and not to disturb. Um, only, excuse me, only one can leave at a time the, to go to the washroom. I can't have a parade going out. You'll have to control yourself. It turns out, sorry about the interruption. It turns out everyone was happy except there was a big problem. 
that year, because of climate conditions and weather, and they didn't have, uh, like today, airplanes. story happened hundreds of years ago, a couple hundred years ago, probably. It turns out there wasn't an estrig to be had in the city of Bardichev. And this was a pachet. How would someone be Mekayim, the Arba Minim, if he simply has no estrig? This was a pachet for many people. It was getting almost sunset, and people could see the sun was coming down. And then they realized, if we don't get an estrig, chas v'shalom, they might be missing a very big mitzvah. We need mitzvahs, especially a precious mitzvah like estrig comes once a year. Shake the lulav, it's brought down. When you shake the lulav, this stops bad winds or germs from coming to your, to your town. And they didn't, so like, it's hard for us to believe they didn't have an estrog because we're in a, a, a rich country where there's thousands of extra estrogen. And you see them all over the place on the tables. But this was the matzav. Rabbi Levi Yisrael was strong in Amunah and Bitacha and he was very connected to Hashem. And he wasn't worried. He said, don't worry. Hashem will help us. And he sent a group of agents, of messengers to stand at the crossroads of the main street passing through the town. And he said, stop the different wagons that pull through. Surely someone's going to have an Arba Minim, one of the travelers from a different town, and we'll be able to buy it from him or maybe convince him to stay. They were worried, but Rebbe Yitzhak knew that Hashem is not going to let them down. Hashem knows how much we want to do a mitzvah. And sometimes when Hashem sees that you want so much to do a mitzvah, that alone is the segula zchus, you should be able to fulfill the mitzvah. In Kachava, that's what happened. A wagon was racing down, and it was going quickly. Please, no eating during the presentation. And as it was zooming, they decided to stop it. And the driver halted the horses. What's going on? We're in a rush. It's almost sunset. We have to get to the next town. We have less than an hour. It's almost the Yantif. And they said, one second, we just want to look inside. And the Hasidim started sticking their heads into the with little windows of the wagon. And they saw the Gevir was taka holding a beautiful silver box. And what could be in a silver box by Yidin? An esrig. And they said to him, please, step outside. The Rebbe wants to speak to you. He's like, I'm sorry, I really can't stop. I, I, I've been in business for months, weeks, and I promised my family I'd be here for Yantiv. It's the last minute. I can't stop. i got to get to the next town. They said, the Rebbe needs to speak to you. Okay, how could you say no? I believe Yisrael Baradichev, everyone heard of him, one of the G'dayle Adar. So, he quickly is ushered to the Rebbe's room, and the Rebbe says, I see you have an esrig. Please, stay with us for Yantif, so that we could all be Mekayim the Mitzvah. He says, no, I'm, I'm sorry, Rabbi. I promised my wife and kids I'd be home for Yantif. How, how could I ruin their Yantif by coming uh, Cholamoid? Uh, they want to see me Yantif. And the Rav says, please, I, I, I'll give you a bracha. If you stay for, uh, with us for Yantif, I'll give you a bracha. You should be a rich man and enjoy Aisher and Kavit. Everyone wants Aisher wealth and riches because it says, Kol yimei ani rayim. All the days of a poor man are bad. He's bad because every day something could break and he can't afford to fix it or he doesn't have the money to buy something he needs. And it turns out, Someone's making unnecessary noise. So, the man told Rebbe Yitzchak, Rebbe, thank you for the bracha, but I already have wealth, I already have honor, and that's not going to motivate me to want to stay and miss, uh, to stay in your town so everyone can use my uh, lulav and esrig and miss Yantiv with my family. So, so the God of Adar, Rebbe Yitzchak said, okay, I'll give you a bracha, you should have children and grandchildren, Sadiqim and Sidkaniyais. And he smiled and said, Rebbe, thank you, but I, I, I'm very gebenched. Baruch Hashem, I see tremendous nagas for my children and my grandchildren. They're all righteous, they're all God fearing. I, I really got to go. So Rebbe Yusuf said, Okay, you make the request, what you want, in order that we can have you stay, be a guest for Yantif. He says, okay, here's my request. 
If you give me a promise that I will be with you in your Olam Ha-